Welcome class. We are in electrochemical series. Today is going to be bomb like never before. What I will be dissolving in this video is the calculation involving electrolysis. But before we enter the calculation involving electrolysis, we have to know the electrochemical series, which is why I am studying. This is a series of what? Electro, what? Electrolysis calculation. And you cannot understand electrolysis calculation without actually understanding the electrochemical series, which is also known as the activity series. In here, I will start by introducing electrolysis and what electrolysis means. It's at the board here. You can see that electrolysis is the chemical changes brought about by the passage of direct current to the electrolyte via the electrolyte, via what? The electrodes. You have to know that the electrode, they have two terminals. And so we have the positive and the negative terminal. And the positive terminal of an electrode is called the anode. The negative terminal of an electrode is called the cathode. Now, I want you to know something. That current enters through the anode and leaves through the cathode. That is a very important question. That is a jump question. And I want you to know something. The process of electrolysis, the process by which electrolysis takes place, or the equipment in which this electrolysis takes place, the whole process of electrolysis takes place in a voltmeter. The whole process of electrolysis takes place in a what? A voltmeter. That is a jump question. And then now I want you to know something. If you miss this introduction, believe me, the part two and part three of the video, you will not get it. This is a bump. When metals lose an electron, they become positively what? Charged. When they lose an electron, they become positively charged. When they gain an electron, metals become what? Negatively charged. And remember, the reason why metals or elements, let me use metal or let me, let me use element, the reason why they either gain or lose an electron is because they want to attend either the octet structure or the duet structure. For example, Using the condensed structure of writing um, sodium is number 11. Using the first 20 elements, sodium is number 11. And then if sodium, the atomic number of sodium, if it's number 11, please, if you have not watched my video on isotopes, immediately pause it and go and watch it. That is a bump. I release a lot of chemical heart there. Sodium as number 11, if it loses an electron, it will become positively charged. How? This is number 11. So the first shell will contain 2, and then you have 8 and what? 1. Now, sodium needs to, you have to know something, please. The first inner shell, the maximum number of electrons it can contain is 2. Watch my video on quantum numbers, please. This first shell, what it can contain is what? The two electrons. After the first shell, the second and third, tail, third shell, they can contain what? The maximum of what? 888. Why? They cannot contain more than 8 because it's either an element lose an, elect, an, an electron and ob, obtain the octet structure or it lose an electron and obtain the what? And obtain the dual structure. So the maximum that will be in a shell is either the 2 or what? The 8. So you can see from here, we have 2,8. Now, for sodium to be stable, right now, the way sodium is, it is not stable. For sodium to be stable, it needs to lose what? One electron. Or it needs to gain seven more electrons to add into this one to make it what? Eight. Now, I normally ask my student, is it easier for you to give someone one naira or for you to give someone seven naira. And most time, 
of course you know the answer. It is easier for you to give someone one naira than for you to give someone what? Seven naira. No element is going to give sodium the eight electron that it needs to obtain that octet structure. And then sodium has to lose the one electron. And that is the reason why we write sodium as what? When you write sodium, you write what? The positive charge. Meaning that what? It lost one electron. Remember, when an element loses an electron, it becomes what? Positively charged. We have a, a case of chlorine. Chlorine, the atomic number of chlorine is seven, right? So you have the atomic number of chlorine, which is 17. So you have two comma eight comma what? Seven. So this is 10 and what? Seven. You can see from this that is it what how many electrons do chlorine need to be stable? You will see that chlorine needs one. It can also chlorine cannot lose seven electrons. It is not easier to give out seven than to gain one. So what chlorine will do is it will gain one electron joined to this seven. It will become eight. And that's the reason why we write chlorine as what? L C L minus because it gains one electron. Are you getting the gist now? So um, that is how um, you can write elements using their charges. For example, we have aluminium is number 13. So you have 2, 8, 3. Are you seeing it? So it has to lose the three electrons because nobody is going to give it five electrons. So it will lose the three electrons to be what? Stable. That's why we write chlorine as what? L3 plus. Now, coming to this side of the board, this is my electrochemical series. You cannot understand electrolysis without actually understanding these things I wrote here. And that is why I wasted time in trying to um, explain what this means. Please, I want you to know something. Whenever an element loses an electron and it becomes a, a positive charge, it becomes positively charged, it is called a word, a cation. Whenever an element gains an electron and it becomes negatively charged, it is called what? An anion. Please note that very well. And then you can see, I wrote um, the activity series of elements at the board here. You can see potassium, of course, it loses one electron, sodium loses one. This is calcium. You have to know the first 30 elements to be very good at this, at least at the O level. Remember this channel, we are more focused on jam and wire. So, this is what you basically need in this O level to be solving a lot of problems. So, uh, you can see the charges attached to potassium is plus, charges attached to sodium, charges, this is calcium, magnesium, aluminium, this is zinc, iron, nickel, this is tin, lead, hydrogen, copper, this is silver, this is mercury, and this is gold. Now, when we enter electrolysis, you are going to be given a question, and then I'm going to name any of these elements that are at the board here. And your duty is to immediately bring out a paper, write it down. All this thing I'm nothing, the element, the charges. Why? Because when we start solving electrolysis calculation, believe me, you will need it. And I'm going to keep it at the board during the duration of this video.